What's going on, everybody? C4, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're here for episode 39 of our Madden 23 Carolina Panthers franchise mode. A special Saturday. Get up early on Saturday. You know, I was sick all week, so figure let's just... We'll work on Saturday, man. It happens from time to time. And I figured with this big-time home matchup against a divisional rival, yo, that's, that, that's a key episode. Not only is it a key episode from the standpoint of what it means for the NFC South, it is a key episode because our quarterback is finally starting to play good football, and I hope that we've got him really into a rhythm. We were sitting at a point where through the first couple of games of his season, he had, you know, two touchdowns to six picks. It was bad. It was rough. It was as bad of a start for a rookie quarterback that starts day one as you could possibly have. However, in the last episode, he came out like a gunslinger. We got a bunch of touchdowns. We are closing the gap on the touchdown to interception ratio. That is one reason to get up for this on a Saturday. Another reason is on the defensive side, there is a certain player that has three touchdowns, or three interceptions, wish there were touchdowns, good enough. Three defensive touchdowns, three picks for Keith Taylor. What's going on everybody, C4? Welcome back to the channel today. We're for episode 39 of our Madden 23 Carolina Panthers franchise mode. We're today on Saturday. It's a special Saturday upload. I was sick all week, missed a couple days. Wanna, you know, we gotta, we gotta get going. We gotta keep pressing. We have our week five home game against the New Orleans Saints. It's a big time NFC South rivalry game and we're gonna get through it here today. Next episode will be a double header. So make sure you guys are tuned for that for week six and week seven, because I kind of just want to roll that into the bye week. But there's a big time reason why optimism. We're three and one, which is great. Anytime you start a year with a franchise rookie, franchise in quotations as it stands right now, but a rookie quarterback, you know, it's almost expect you're gonna be some growing pains, if you will. And we've kind of gone through some growing pains until last episode, Joel North, I think he had two touchdowns to six interceptions. That is about as bad of a stat line as you could ask for a quarterback through their first four starts, four or five starts in the NFL. But last episode, we started getting some touchdowns. We've closed the gap just a little bit, and we are now sitting at five touchdowns to seven interceptions. And our goal today against the Saints, Saints are a very annoying team to go up against. Their defense does get a lot of turnovers. But our plan for Joe North, the rope man, is to finish this episode with more touchdowns than interceptions, which is kind of a goal. But the reason, another reason, offensively from the last episode, we're looking good. We're feeling good. But defensively, there is a man that has three interceptions in his last two games. He is flirting with a breakout. And if they don't give him the breakout, we might have to just impose, self-impose a breakout scenario. Keith Taylor thriving this year. You know, last year, get a lot of tackles. 81 total tackles. Sure, tackles are fine. He's the last line of defense more often than not, especially when like a running back breaks through the secondary, gets to the second level. But this year... Keith Taylor, Jr., three interceptions and counting. If we can get Keith, you know, we've had guys get double digits. We've had multiple guys get double digits. If Keith Taylor can add his name to that list, if he could keep playing at this level with J.C. Horn back in line. Yeah, when J.C. Horn was hurt, someone else had to step up and get some turnovers, and that's kind of what Keith Taylor was doing. But now that we are full strength as it stands on the defensive side of the ball, and if Keith Taylor can keep playing at that kind of level, man, this might go down as one of the best defenses in NFL history. Speaking of our secondary, we can negotiate with CJ Henderson, who has developed very nicely for us. He's looking for a four-year deal. Got to probably pay him a little bit more. We'll go player friendly. We'll go five and a half there, and we'll go four. So we'll give him a five-year, $47.5 million deal for a man with double-digit interception numbers a year ago. Getting him locked in. I just feel like it's one of those things where you evaluate our secondary. Like, there's so many turnovers. Can you plug and play different players? That's one way of thinking about it. And that's usually a cost-effective way of thinking about it. Because you, these guys that get a lot of interceptions in your scheme, it's kind of almost like the Patriots, right? The Patriots, it feels like almost every five years, they'll have, like, it's probably going to be Jack Jones in a couple years. And before that, it was J.C. Jackson. Before that, it was... Uh, I don't want to say Stephon Gilmer because he's kind of been good everywhere else. But, like, you know, before that was Asante Samuel. And I'm probably forgetting someone in between. But, like, the Patriots have always had a guy that just gets insane amount of interception numbers. And then when it comes time to pay them, they don't pay and They let them go elsewhere. They kind of suck. And then they limp back to the Patriots for a cheap deal. And you can almost think, is that what we have brewing here in Carolina? Between J.C. Horn, C.J. Henderson, Dante Jackson, now Keith Taylor. 
it's like the interceptions are there is it the scheme that has the interceptions there we can plug and play different players and they will get those turnovers or are these guys just that good of a unit Do these guys just play that well together that's the way that i'm thinking about it i want to keep the band together so we get henderson locked up Derek brown is currently earning and fighting and clanging and banging for a contract extension i gotta wait and see it i need to see a little bit more austin corbett's an interesting one he's only 28 years old 80 with the star dev not overly expensive and i also like the fact that he only looking for a two-year deal is somewhat reasonable so i, I don't want to give him anything more than two years but i'll come up a little bit more on the price point here i'll give him a two-year 15 mil and he wants a little bit more and I, he's replaceable that that's kind of the point how many sacks have you given up maybe he's not replaceable but i feel like he's replaceable you have nine sacks last year which is yeah, average not great not you know he's given up two this year i think we'll wait and see maybe he can, again he can play himself into a contract extension but for the players that are you know still looking to get paid I, I think ian thomas at fullback would be an interesting one but that might be another one that's like do we let him hit the open market and bring him back because I, I don't think the demand's gonna be huge for him but either way tommy Trouble's gonna be the next one he's most likely gonna be the next guy uh three years looking for under 20 mil very interested in resigning which is great clearly the chemistry between him and joe north is developing he wants to be here wants to be a part of the project so waiting for week seven to occur and then we'll offer him a little bit of money towards the end of the next episode so we got the saints two and two they got jimmy g under center very good offense seventh in points per game fourth in yards fifth in passing yards and even though you, you know the run's not that good they still got uh alvo camara so we really do need to stop the th we'll take away the short throw it's jimmy g how, how terrified are we of him kind of beating us down deep they have an outstanding run defense top five run defense but their passing is not particularly good now we want to run blitz counter for some reason yes they have cam jordan but look at that they run six percent man blitz 24 percent zone blitz they pretty much just sit in zone so if that's what they're doing and they struggle stopping the medium pass that is exactly what we're going to do and it looks like it is going to be a solid week for joel north as long as we can kind of hone in on the interceptions and the turnovers as far as yards are concerned between the 20s i think we are going to be able to move the football pretty i don't want to say easily but i'm optimistic that we're going to have a great game throwing the football defensively we are going to this one full strength offensively and we have been pretty lucky all things considered for practice injuries we I mean, know we did suffer the jc horn injury in the preseason but uh things feel pretty good and look at these off games one to jc horn we'll spend it there he gets plus two to his base overall we got awareness man covers play rec press one speed one tackle for the best corner in the nfl it's only a matter of time at least 99 club and our young quarterback joel north will pump that right in to the field general for the rope man getting awareness plus three deep accuracy bringing that up to 81 so now he's broke that 80 threshold and i'm excited to see what he can do here this week against saints let's go get it man i feel good i'm ready i think we're gonna put up a big number Man, I don't even think I uh, saw from that intro anyways. Is Jimmy G even their starter? Yeah, some white guy. Literally. Literally. Some white guy. I need to pay attention to that. See who they strut out under center. Maybe a little bit of a quarterback controversy. They're trying to keep it confusing. And of course, it's it's a torrential downpour. So we've kind of set up everything this week to throw the ball. They have a very good run defense. Boom, there we go. And that's going to be an actual 15. We got popped after that. Joe North, they're trying to rattle the young quarterback. That's fine, man. He's tough. He knows how to take a shot like his old man. Ooh. Okay. Could bounce to the outside. Could have been more on that, but Honey Badger brings him down. Oh. Yes. Shitty tackling. They should have had him beyond the line, but shitty tackling from the Saints. DJ Moore converts. Got a good run there to the outside. Great block by Ian Thomas. Man, we got to get. I can't let Ian Thomas leave. 
Even though I want him to leave because I don't want to pay him as a tight end. I don't know. We let him hit the open market. We can't bring him back. I'm going to be sad because he's such. And he's blocking sucky. He's like 60 blocking. Second and one. And it's. Oh, it's up to the one. I think we're going to have to run this one in. Two of a time. I know the, the idea is to keep chipping away at those interceptions to touchdowns on north. And it does also feel like we get a lot of one yard line stops because that's just how Madden works. But uh, it's all about securing the dub. Second and goal on the one. I mean, if this doesn't work, we might even go north as, as a QB sneak. But DeAndre Swift, not you. We're kind of used to them like the Lions. Don't use them a whole lot in the red zone. Kind of bring in Chuba Hubbard, much like the Lions bring in Jamal Williams, which is, I don't want to ever hear Jamal Williams' name again as a DeAndre Swift fantasy owner. But uh, we'll feed DeAndre here, man. He can get it done. Punches it in. And a lot of momentum on that opening drive for the Carolina Panthers. All right, they got White back there. Hmm. Okay. Quick scouting report. He's a rookie. 71 overall. Not much of an athlete. Best arm in the, on the team. Yeah. I will say that's why, even though we have a weapon... A receiving weapon in DeAndre Swift. There's still, like, we don't got Christian McCaffrey. We don't have, like, that guy as far as a receiving threat as a running back up the backfield. PBU, JC Horn. Got a chance to get off the field here. Third and five. Out of a midfield. We'll go, we'll go Roquan. Try to watch the middle. Yes. Hey, it's, this is not this is not the best quarterback we're gonna see all year. Right? And this is probably one of the best defenses he's gonna see all year. Just can't do that. There we go. Hey, there we go. That's a little bit of like a break even right there. Oh, I still can't believe you threw that pick, but hey, that's just equally as bad of a give up from the Saints defense. All right, big time hit. Make him work for it. Third and one. Likely going to be a run. Let's get Troy Anderson here. 90 speed, built in the lab. An absolute alien. He doesn't bite. Sack Troy Anderson. Let's go. What a, what a, I mean, he, I'll tell you right now, we look, he was on the name of list looking for a guy. I, I can't let him go, man. He transcends every series on this channel. Troy Anderson, what a god. Gotta hit that. Gotta hit that. What, that's, he won. He won his rep. There we go. Go with the run. DJ Moore, get him involved. Good route. Darius Tony matched up against the linebacker. We'll pick on that every time. Go Swifty at the back. See Camara. We raise you. DeAndre Swift can kind of do those things too. Got a second and goal. Bring in Chuba. The Chuba train. Red zone machine. We'll be able to continue. Doesn't get blocked up particularly well. Third and goal. Don't really love the idea of a slant. But I do like this, man. Got underrated guy in a red zone, LaVisca Chanel. Underrated in the red zone, LaVisca Chanel. Sipping some tea. Is that the classy way to teabag guys now? All right, Roquan in the gap. Misses his tackle. JC Horn lets Kamara feel it. No. Oh. 
No! Got too aggressive. Just tackle that. It might even been a PBU. We tried to go for the pick. Oh, my eyes lit up. I thought that was... We read that. I thought I was like, oh, yeah. We, we're going to jump in. No. Get out of here. Troy Anderson. Sheldon. Second round pick in the backfield. Bend. Don't break. We'll bring a little bit more pressure here. It'll be Chin. Try to, try to watch everything. And they just fucking slant it. Chris Olave helps keep him in it. There we go. Kendarius. Tony. A lot of, it's going to be a high scoring game, man. Shoot out. Third and three. Two minute warning on the 31. I was thinking about just running this, but. Eh, fuck it. Oh! <laughs> been sick. I'll take the points. Oh, that would have been unreal. Terrible weather, but we have a new superstar kicker. Gives us seven point lead. Man, everything they have, like they have three, like we'll say they have two hundred yards of offense. Mine. Like, oh. I was just about to say, ninety percent of the yards have got to be from Alvin Kamara, and then the rookie quarterback throws it to Chauncey Gardner Johnson. Currently, in real life, the active leader in interceptions in the NFL. That is, you know what? That's equal to the pick we threw. I'm not going to gloat because we threw, arguably ours was worse. But let's go, man. Break it even on the pick sixes. Oh, man. Just bad tackling from Roquan here today. A couple bad misses for him. Denzel Mims, former Panther. Oh, what? Great concentration. You know, you got to just give it to him, man. Great concentration draft for there by Chris Alave. Third and three. Cover the check downs. And then the finds the wide open. Chris Alave again. And they're just, how's there just groups? One guy's almost always wide open. Gabe Davis, former Buffalo Bill. Just couldn't be easier. Again, Roquan, slow to react, didn't follow his man. Great grab. Great grab, great ball, great throw. Second and ten. I don't like the run call here. I probably would stay aggressive and throw it. This almost feels like we're fine with a field goal type play calling. Hitch corners, third and eight. Treble swift. I almost want to send Visca deep. Huh? It's big boy football right there. Kadarius Tony, the unwanted from the Giants, is a budding superstar for the Panthers. First and goal. Oh, yeah, there we go. DeAndre Swift, second touchdown of the game. Easy does it. Man, if our defense could actually start getting some stops, this game would be over. Keith! Keith! Oof, what the fuck? Keith? What was that? Look at this. Deep safety. Watch the throw the whole way. Michael Thomas kind of shrugs off Dunt and then... Come on, Keith. He just got put on a poster. There we go. Keith's pissed. He's getting TFLs now. We got ourselves third and 13 on the 20. I mean, they could be in four down territory. They've been aggressive today. We'll see. Let me get a turnover here. Drop. I mean, contested catch. Are they for sure going to kick it? They are going to go for the field goal. He's a superstar. He's a superstar. He's a superstar! Vic. 
Visca runs away. They just don't get the speed, man. This offense, this offense gets in rhythm. They did last week. It's carried over to this week. I don't know who's stopping us. It's giving me more than one hand on that, Chauncey. That's an easy pick six, bud, as Franklin Lindsay. D-tackle two. Picks up an injury. Davion Nixon back in the lineup. Third and 15. They see something they like. Bet. As kids say. And we'll just take the safety. Fourth and 17. Defense trying to bail it after the... Uh, it's just super counterproductive. Trying to run it up, trying to get the more touchdowns and interceptions, and it causes us an interception that shouldn't have happened. But we will definitely take a free interception. And that is Mr. Chin, the Chin Man. Clucks in his fucking face. Yeah, suck it, Camara. Third inches. Get another touchdown. There we go. Four touchdowns, two picks. That Josh Allen stat line. There's no, I mean, just fucking, there's no fucking way. Trying to pad my stats. I'm going to keep patting my stats. They're getting these fucking bullshit touchdowns. I'm going to keep going. I'm getting another touchdown before this game is over. I'm fucking real. I'm patting stats. Fuck you, Saints. Make add a little bit more spice to this rivalry. Whatever. Unbelievable. And maybe the most Madden game we've had so far this year. We win 60-43. to 43. Joel North, 400 yards, five touchdowns. That's all we need to talk about with him, right? Nothing else. There was no interceptions. There was nothing. Four, five, and two. Still take that for a rookie. We had 108 yards, two touchdowns. DeAndre Swift, Chuba Hubbard. I mean, he got his touches, I suppose. Uh, wasn't overly effective. We actually saw more so when Chuba was in how good that Saints run defense was. Uh, superstar, man. Kadir, no touchdowns. Ten catches, 197 yards. What a monster. DJ Moore, 139 yards, two tutties. Visca Chanel, two touchdowns. Tommy Tremble also had a touchdown. On the defensive side, Dante Jackson and Chauncey Gardner Johnson both getting 11 tackles. Chauncey Gardner Johnson also chipping in. A TFL and interception. We got a sack for Nixon, Brown, Troy Anderson, half sack Burns, and Matos split it. That was also the safety. But Nixon, that's something to keep an eye on depending on the injury to Lindsey. Nixon came in, got a sack, got a TFL. We all know he's very, very capable. Uh, Jeremy Chin also had an interception here today and what is abs you know It's not a pretty win. I don't know why the score is showing different, but It's uh We'll take it Following up from the game, DeAndre Swift earned himself an upgrade point We'll pump that right into elusive back even though I am considering maybe starting to shift a little bit of these points Towards receiving back. I'll take the break tackle plus two change of direction plus three spin move Ooh, I only can guess who I think that might be. Breako linebacker to kick off the next episode, which will be a doubleheader. But the thing I want to look at is we started this episode with more interceptions than touchdowns, and we finished ahead. Still, nine interceptions. Way too many for five games into the season. All right? But also, 10 touchdowns is a lot of touchdowns to have. 1,500 yards, a lot of yards to have through five. So, I mean... Feeling good, man. About 300 yards a game. We cut down on those interceptions. Or we keep getting like a 3-to-1 touchdown interception ratio. You know, I'll go 40 touchdowns, 20 picks if we got it kind of this year. If uh, if that's how it all kind of finishes when the dust settles. A great one-two punch here in the backfield. And there's just... He's, he's ridiculous, man. 125 yards per game so far for Kadarius Stoney. He got to be the leading receiver in the league. He is. Like, by a decent amount. And the Giants didn't want him. Giants were like, this guy here, surplus requirement. Don't need him. Right there at the top, right above the webcam, receiving leader, Kadarius Tony. That's awesome.
And we got a breakout linebacker scenario to kick off the next episode, fellas. So that will do it for me today. Hope you guys did enjoy this special Saturday episode of the Panthers franchise. Mode. First time stopping by, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. I got about seven minutes before France and England kicks off. I want to go watch that. I'll edit this up. You guys will see it after supper. And I'll see you guys back here tomorrow as we uh, go on some little more C4 react to the massive Giants and Eagles matchup. But until then, it's your boy C4. Say peace out. Love you. Have a good one.